the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Zarell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. I am excited about our guest. Thank you, Neil. I'm doing great. Paul Crowder. Oh, my word. I cannot believe what you have done in your life. You have two songs that you were instrumental in that I uh, listened to and have gazillion views. Last Christmas by Wham and uh, George Michael's Careless Whisper has 1.2 billion listens on YouTube. That's so crazy to me. But you're an award-winning filmmaker. You are an award-winning editor. You've done so much. You're so creative. And then now you got to work with the Blue Angels and do this incredible project that has killed it in the box office. And I want to just welcome you to the show and ask how excited are you that this is doing so well? Well, thanks for having me on the show, Kim and Neil. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, I couldn't have imagined it go as well as this. I used Blue Angels, you know, were, have a fantastic following and everything. I had no idea it would translate to the theater tickets as, as it has. And obviously we're all over the moon at the success of the film so far. And to be fair, with everybody that was involved, my, much like the Blue Angels, it's a big team and it takes everybody to do it. You know, I might sit in the front seat, but everybody else is with everyone who else does their job has to get this right and so if everybody's pulling their weight and doing the quality level of the blue angels um then you end up with a very good product and that's what it took it was you know multiple people doing a fantastic job how were you so surprised they had such a huge following i mean we've all heard of the blue angels but what was the surprise once this project got moving further and further and you knew you were gonna it was be such a huge success Exactly. I always thought it, it had so much potential because, you know, I've been in bands in my past. I've been doing things in the past where you mention them and people go, mm, not sure I've heard of that. Wherever you mention the Blue Angels, once I knew I was sort of going to be involved and I started to talking, I started to talk to people about it, then everyone said, oh, God, I love the Blue Angels. I love the Blue Angels. There wasn't anyone who went, no, I've not heard of the Blue Angels. Everybody knows who they are. Everybody loves them. Even my neighbor, I told my neighbor next door, he's got his little boy. He was like, I love the Blue Angels. So, you know, I was, I was flabbergasted. So I knew we were, you know, pressure was on. We're going to have to really do a good job here because the public are going to demand so. They're going to want this to be a good film. It's not just going to be, you know, what it is. It's going to be seen by Blue Angels fans. And when you look out there, there's so much, so many, you know, little clips on TV and you see that they've got so many views and everything that we we knew we had a ton of potential just if, if we did the right job and did a good film we would have the potential to have a, li a little hit on our hands and that's exactly how it seems to have panned out which is you know i couldn't be happier with and it also helps sort of vindicate that we did a good job you know and that we did the right thing well and, and picked the the right guy picked you you've worked on on projects before that have uh been humongous like the story of the Hue, the documentary on the Hue, uh, uh, on the Who, and on the Beatles. And so you've, this isn't new to you, but some of it I would think would be different than working with a band or or working on other things. This, from what I understand, their days are grueling. Like they've got to be in top physical condition. They're flying inches apart from each other. They've got to be able to trust each other. How do they stay uh, fit? And how do they build that kind of trust in each other to to risk their lives every time they go in the air? Well, the big thing that they do is when they pick their team, every year a third of the team rotates out of Blue Angels and a third of the team gets brought in. Much like any military tour, you do two or three year tour depending on your position. So they rotate a third of those people out and they have to pick them and they hand pick them themselves. And it has to be a complete unanimous decision within the 17 or 18 of them in the room. They all have to agree. And no one has to give an excuse why. If someone says no, they just say no. Okay, that one's gone. So the fact that they spend such a meticulous time getting to know the people before they join, they make sure they pick people that they know are going to be a good fit, that already they feel they can trust. So then when it comes down to the three months of training to get them up to speed, you're just building, building more and more trust. And that was also something we had to do as filmmakers because they needed to know that 
we were going to shine them in the correct light. They needed to know that we were going to respect their uh, way of life, and we had to make sure we didn't in, um, interrupt anything. So everything had to be completely coordinated to where we're going to be at what time of the day, any time of the day we're going to be at this part of the, we're on the flight line here. Can we be on the flight line? Yes, and that's where we'll be at 9.53, not 9.54, it's not L.A., not, you know, it's quarter past 10. It's like 9.53. So um, it was, you know, working with them, gaining their trust, them gaining my trust, and the team's trust, such a fantastic team we had, such a fantastic team they had, that all was very, very important. And one of the things that helped build the trust just a little bit was the fact that because I was a musician, a musician and I had been in the... Uh, a founding member of Flogging Molly, there was a couple of Flogging Molly fans within the pilots. They kind of fanboyed out on me, and I was fanboying out on them. <laughs> it was uh, really cool. Yeah. Um, but that really helped. You're a rock star. They're rock stars. That's the bottom line. Right. So they, well, they are, for sure. I mean, it's like walking around with the Beatles. You know, you, John, the faces change, but you still look at them as if it's John Paul, George, and Ringo, and a couple of others. You know, you really feel like the suits just mean so much to everybody. And you look at them as rock stars. That's exactly. And their lifestyles like that. They're on the road 300 days a year, living in, in and out of each other's pockets, having to, you know, and you know how that can be if you're on anywhere with anybody. Families get together. It's like after 10 days, like, oh, you know, <laughs> but you have to get over all that. And you just have to, um, you, you know, there's no way you can have any animosity at all. You have to all be... 100% happy about who's around you because you've got to trust them with your lives. And that was the one thing I loved so much. Every day, everyone's got a smile on their face. They're walking up and down the corridors, high-fiving each other when they pass. Even if they passed five minutes ago, they're still fist-bumping, high-fiving, smiling, first-name basis. That's great. It's such a fantastic vibe. It was just the most beautiful thing to be around. Uh, so it was uh, a really incredible, yes. incredible thing. Jim, I'm going to give you the love question real quick because we're almost running out of time. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Oh, my gosh. I could talk to you forever. It just sounds so great. And so uh, I lived a year uh, figuring out, Paul, what the true meaning of love is. Mostly I was in Haiti. The things that I found out just really rocked my world. And I'm just curious. There, there has got to be a love that binds these guys together. I mean, you're just talking about the fist pumping and how they are toward each other. It, and and like you said, I mean, it's, what is it? Fish and, and gas after three days, they spoil and they need to leave, <laughs> whatever the saying is. And I think that's so true. And so somehow they stay all together. Do you think love plays a role? And if so, where where do you see it playing a role? Well, absolutely love plays a role. I mean, and in anything, love conquers all, doesn't it, in the end? And these guys love each other because they trusted them and at the end of the day they came out the other side and we're all still here and we're rocking it and we're signing autographs and we're taking photographs to the public the public want to come see us again hundreds of thousands of people out there i mean there's really it's like what's not to love but there is definitely without a doubt a undermining love of all of them and, and for what they do how important it is for them to demonstrate how fantastic uh, U.S. Navy are and the rest of our air, air military. And what I love about it is that you know these guys are going back into the service and you can feel 100% confident that we're in safe hands while they're protecting our shores when you can see what they can do with their jets in the sky. 100%. So it really is an amazing. All right. So check out Prime Video beginning today uh, to, uh, to the documentary. Appreciate it, Paul. Uh, thanks for the soar with the blue angels available now on Amazon. Thanks again, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. You guys have a great weekend. Lots of love to you all. You too. You're listening and watching the Neil Haley show and special simulcast of the love is podcast guys. Take care.